So when we talk about AI and digital pathology, you can Google computational pathology and you'll see a lot of robust discussion in the literature already. You'll also note that there isn't a clear definition of what computational pathology is, but computational pathology is going to include AI and AI is going to be the disruptor. That's going to be the big disruptor in how we do our practice. And I'll just take you back for those pathologists on the line uh, to remember how we were taught pathology. We were taught pattern recognition through ex experience. And, and what was that experience? Looking at as many slides as we could. And what we were looking for in pattern recognition is reproducible morphologic features that would lead us to the right diagnostic uh, category. And as we all know in pathology, experience improves accuracy. The more we see and the more we retain, the better we get. So now I want to just remind all of us that AI can learn at faster rates. It doesn't fatigue. Human beings can only absorb so much in a limited amount of time, whereas AI can keep reading. They can keep reading 24-7 and getting more experience as we sleep. They can retain more, more information. As you know, there's studies that say human beings have to see things from three to five times before it imprints strongly enough to stay in our memory. And then there are those of us who will have a memory capacity that over time may shrink a little bit. It doesn't happen with AI. AI never gets fatigued. It never fatigues either in the learning process or once it's developed in the application process. And that also is going to portend to a more accurate and safer diagnosis because when we apply AI, it's never going to be tired. It's never going to get distracted by a frozen section of phone call or distracted by something going on in its personal life. It's never going to have a non-motivated day and it's not going to need a vacation day. So. When we think about AI, if we're skeptical about this, remember that we are already doing AI in a certain respect. Our micro identification relies on, when we're identifying organisms in cultures, it relies on a, a computer algorithm to give us the probability of identification. Next generation sequencing wouldn't be usable without AI putting together that uh, immense amount of data. Think about whether or not AI could do better than we as pathologists in looking at and, and quantifying lymphocyte de density in a breast case uh, in, in response to neoadjuvant therapy. Think about there was a quick study done in Beth Israel last year where they found in sentinel nodes detecting breast cancer in nodes that AI was 92% accurate, physicians were 96 but both put together were 99%. And, and when I envision AI occurring, the disruption will occur, but it will start out with us being partners with it, right? It's not going to come in and replace us. It's going to come in and we're going to oversee it, and then we're going to make it better, and then it's going to make us better. It's never going to miss that tiny piece of tumor on slide 22 of 30 in our breast excisions because it was distracted. So I think there's many exciting changes on the way. We're going to either ride this wave or to do to a better practice or we're going to be overwhelmed by the wave. 